Can you identify this sound? Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> That is the story of my life, that sound. Dun dun. I understand uh, why people can't agree on it. They write dun dun, but it is a very layered sound. So I stand with the people that say clank clank. I stand with them. Hi, I'm Marishka Hargate, and we're gonna be looking at some scenes from Law & Order Special Victims Unit for over the past 25 seasons. the desert and through the big fence. A man was waiting. He took me to New York. And this was after your mom died? Mm. No, she was still alive. So this is very funny to me, because I'm just, it's all coming back to me. When are you coming to get me? Soon, Maria. You have to be brave. I did this entire episode with the script supervisor reading the lines off camera. And we put in the voice afterwards. And that was the hardest thing ever. Because I've got the script supervisor, whatever her lines are, they come help me, come help me. Please, when are you coming to get me? Going, come help me, come help me. I'm in a room, I don't know where I am. I should have won an Emmy just for that, okay? Actually, they should give me another one for that. Maria, listen to me, Richard isn't gonna hurt you. The other thing about this episode, Ted Kotcheff, who was our uh, directing producer at the time, would only shoot pieces, four lines at a time which is very hard for an actor for flow. I don't like stopping. I like doing the whole scene. With this, we do one or two lines and he's like, good, got it, moving on. So it was really disjointed and not to mention, we don't even shoot the episode in order. So it was really mental gymnastics to keep track of where I was in the episode, plus not acting with an actor, but just somebody reading the lines. This ground's been disturbed. Footprint. We need to dig, get some tools. Okay, you would get pieces of fence, anything. Such weird wardrobe choice. Is that going to a rugby game? But moving on. I remember shooting this scene, it was so hard. The little girl was buried underground and I was so stressed out about how long she was under there. We feel so protective of the actors and the people that play these characters because so many times, I mean, we find bodies in the snow, in the cold, when it's raining. <laughs> it's okay, honey. It's okay. Good girl. It's okay, Maria. You know, the actors are usually so like, no, this is fun for me, but it still can be traumatizing or triggering. And for this sweet little girl that was so game, I just remember being so tight. When I was little that day, I remember that. How's the baby? <sighs> Great. Hmm. Mm. If I'm correct, I think that's the first time we ever hugged on the show. And he surprised me with it. And it was so right. And in that scene, I think it's somewhere where you can really feel everything unspoken, almost more than, than the spoken word. Chris and I were very careful and very uh, judicious the way we interacted physically. I think Chris and I, Benson and Stabler, at the end of the day, it's, it's all the same. Pick a name. In the relationship, whether it was acting or being partners, there was a level of trust. If I had like six dots, and this was him and this was me. And then you connect the dots. They connected so many ways. Acting partners, friends, comedians, people that hold each other accountable. We almost had like our own language. I mean, here we were for these 12 years and we spent more time with each other than our spouses. All day we were making this thing together, all day long, that we built together, that we created together. Kathy wants to name him after me. That's what the world needs, another Elliot Stabler. The level of trust was deep. It's crazy, it's profound, right? That would do anything for you. And that's what we were, is having that person, not a boyfriend, not a wife, not a sexual relationship, but that person 
that you can trust in all that that means. Oh, is this the is this the game here? Make Marishka cry, okay? <laughs> that was very beautiful to watch. Because usually you watch old scenes and you go, I do it differently now. You know, I could bring more colors to it. But it's also nice to see something beautiful for what it is and love it. You walk out that door and we will pretend that this never happened. You'll pretend that this didn't happen, would you? Ah! You're lying. It's funny, you do these scenes and then you have to put it out of your mind, almost self-protection, to go on and do um, the job at hand. There's something I think that you should hear. Hey, Lou, it's me. Uh, look, I know we were talking about getting together um, tomorrow. When these guys are jerking me around over here, I gotta pull a double. It was one of the first times when Olivia really wasn't in control, and at points there was no recourse, and he was a sadist. Billy, I'm offering you a way out. You're still bargaining with me? Really? Well, that is profoundly uh, frightening. When somebody doesn't regard another human being as human, I think the most scary thing is when somebody is dealing with somebody, a violent person who's not present. And the idea of not being able to get through to another human being is dark as it gets. I'm an NYPD detective. My partner, my squad, the entire department will hunt you down. Pablo Schreiber, amazing actor and amazing scene partner, scared the shit out of me. Even though some of these scenes were on the edge of being out of control, I always felt very uh, safe with him. It will rain back down on you. You know what? Let it rain. This was an episode outside the comfort zone and where you have to live in the unknown because you don't know what's gonna happen or if you can get out of it. Please don't come in, please. That's it, that's it. Satisfied? You can end this right now. All you have to do is walk out that door. Ah, I think it's a little too late for me. How great is this kid, Riley? Are you a man, Seth, or are you an animal? Animals are weak. He's so money. We need our own show. Are you? No. Well then, I think you know what your next step is. This was a case that pushed Olivia Benson out of her comfort zone and was so triggering. It's called Children's of Wolves, obviously dealing with the animal in all of us, the animal that we need to tame. And I wanted to do something outside my comfort zone. Every time I direct, I'm utterly terrified. And I say, what am I doing? And then I start directing and I go, oh, yeah, I remember. A director, it takes eight days to shoot an episode, but you have eight days of prep. And that's when most directors do all their work, is in prep. And I don't get that. I was uh, also heavily featured in the episode before, and I sort of begged them to write a lighter episode for me so I could do my prep. The director who, who went before me got COVID, and so I had to shoot. I had two days of prep. And then they're like, okay, Mershka, she can do it. And I sort of, like, what, what, what? Do they think I have superhero powers? Because I don't. And I've only directed nine hours of television, so everyone needs to calm down. Hold your fire! It was very challenging. And this day was particularly challenging because this was the whole mobilization unit. You know, I had 100 background and all of the cast and not to mention all the kids inside. And the best part about this is if you see this scene, it's not raining. And in the next scene, it's pouring. And it wasn't supposed to rain till the next day. So I shoot this scene and then all of a sudden, the skies opened up, it was like a comedy. And I was like, uh, uh, because all you can do is make peace with it. But there were so many degrees of difficulty. You don't have the luxury of a movie of time. We have like eight days, baby. This is the schedule, because we got another one starting in eight days, so. Liv, Elliot's here. Do as he says, Al. Liv, you all right? Elliot, please, just do what he says. Liv, shut up!
It's very interesting watching that because I don't remember it at all. Do you remember the pillow fight and Brian Park? I do. That wasn't the same episode, was it? It was. Oh. We are here to celebrate the unexpected. I mean, who thinks of a pillow fight at Brian Park? Let's put him in Brian Park with a pillow fight. Pillows? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. You could arrest Merritt for littering. To watch somebody in utter flow, to watch flow happening, that which is invisible, he was the personification of. It was magnificent. Different every time, funny every time, and truthful and believable and what is happening? How am I so lucky that I get to witness it? It was magic. Everything was electric with him. Like there was no line between sort of acting and who he was as a person. And the most fun person and the most generous and it was pure joy. And he made all of us feel so special. I remember I, my son was, um, I think, two or three, and Robin grabbed him and picked him up and was so kind and doing voices for him. And you're just in this moment going, I'm pinching myself that I get to live in the same time with somebody so magnetic and so magic and so generous that you go, I'm just different because we got to breathe the same oxygen. It was pretty great. May I tie my shoe? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and didn't we all blow up here? <laughs> yes, I did that stunt that day. I've been pretty athletic, and I would push hard. I don't anymore. But at the time, I pushed hard to do uh, my own stunts as, as long as I was safe. But these kinds of things, yes, I did, and I loved it. And it was super fun that day. It was so cool, yeah. When you're doing it and you're shooting 10 months a year, I'm just trying to do what's in front of me. I have to focus on the day's work, and then the next day's work, and the next day's work. So I haven't had the luxury to sit in it. It's a marathon that I've been running. I mean, this is so joyful for me to sit here and sort of revel in it and re-experience it again. This is a gift. Thank you for watching and for going on this journey with me.